Hey guys, Raven here. Sorry for the long way for the next video, but eh, what you gonna do? Like I said, one of my excuses in my last video was I was dead on ideas. But this weekend gave me an idea for a video that I actually thought would be actually kind of cool. At my locals on Saturday, I pretty much took a Despia Shadol deck similar to the one I posted a while ago to my locals, mainly because Crossout Designator at that point was now legal. Fear in Crossout Designator, I tried to gear it towards more of a going first build and try to see if the build would work. Spoilers, it did not. So what I did instead was that I tried to look back and see what went wrong. And then I remembered the build that I had for the locals earlier on that week, where I went to a Thursday locals instead. It was the exact same area, exact same meta, exact same everything, but I went undefeated in that locals. So my question is, what went right and what went wrong? Simply put, it's analyzing the build. The core concept of analyzing a build for a deck is pretty much looking at a deck, seeing what works, what does not, what could be viable for going first and what could be viable for going second, and see how the deck should overall perform. The deck in question, of course, was Despia Shadol, and Shadols are usually a going second deck, but can afford going first if it means making Winder with a whole bunch of stuff to help support her. Despias have, of course, a big Quintrax guy, and still have no idea how to pronounce his name, but with his effect just being a effect that flat zeroes everything uh, that is in a level 8 or higher fusion monster, and the fact that he floats as soon as he leaves the field, it's a decent effect, but more or less on terms to break boards rather than create a board of your own. So this brought up the valuable question, was the deck built to go first? And a lot of builds that I've seen online get a rise to the option that yes, it should go first. But from the way I played it, I was seeing more of a going second utility out of it. And with my results of a going second build proving itself time and time again that it was strong, heck, it almost defeated Tribrigade at the, one of the locals prior to the first day one, with only time being against me. But thanks to the release of one card, this one card, I feared that the deck may be dead, especially with my locals in particular, Crossout Designator was being pulled left, right and centre. But in the locals that was being used, hardly anybody was using it. And it's not because people thought it was a bad card. Pfft. Seriously, do you honestly believe Crossout's a bad card? It's mainly because of a factor of that it's like called by the grave. As soon as I realized that three copies of Crossout Designator was just similar to three copies of Called by the Grave when it was first released, my initial thought process was I could still easily get around it with a going second deck. It's a bit of a poor analysis, sure, but as a whole, three crossout designators are still nothing to fear, even if you do not have crossout designators yourself when you go into it. For instance, this is a build that I have right here. It's kind of similar to a lot of Tribrigade builds, where they just use an asinine amount of hand traps in order to get around the stuff from the last matter. But as a whole, it helped to compete. And with the opening hands I was using with this build from the previous weeks, I was opening two to three hand traps on a regular basis. And Crossout Designator only allows you to use one of it per turn, and allows you to only negate one of them, if it is in comparison to Called by the Grave, where pretty much all three of them can be used at once. However, you could also take the main deck's engine into consideration. I used the Dogmatica engine as a bit of a going first engine. It's good for going first, but when you don't open the Dogmatica cards you want, hello Maximus, then the engine is pretty much dead. Even as going second, the engine pretty much would be dead even as a one-off. So how do you mitigate this? Simple, you just analyze your deck, realize what worked and what did not, then get rid of the weak links in the deck. Another example of a card that I thought to myself was a little bit of a oddball that didn't play any form of big changes in the deck was the inclusion of a card that I thought to myself would be a decent one-off after seeing a 60-card Despia build at my locals, and that card being Despian Carmody. The idea of Carmody was that it was supposed to protect the Despias when they were on the field, but the fact that it works best in more of a pure Despia build pretty much proves my point that in the build that I was using, it served no purpose. So what's the build that I'm using right now? Well, it's closely similar to this one. I only got one crossout designator at the moment, but I'm closely leaning in towards getting my second one. But at the moment, that's the build that I am looking at. It's a little bit weird and wonky, but it still works around crossout in a bit of a unique way. For example, Beast King Alpha is only in there for the time being, mainly because it's just a free special summon. It has no synergy with a deck, but the fact that I could just simply flap him onto the board and get rid of some problematic stuff, 
or bed out some problematic stuff is something immensely helpful to have in an overall long, uh, long run. But that's not most likely what's going to stay in, because a card that absolutely did way too much work at the locals that I won was Droll and Lockbird. Still doesn't work with a deck, sure, but neither does Ash when it comes to the fusion mechanics. What I also realised as well at my locals is that there are far too many Earth decks, or things that use Earth as an overall mechanic, roaming around the area. So, that my idea of involving Shekinaga is actually an idea, but it's not confirmed just yet, mainly because very niche circumstances, but there's still a lot of Earth-based things out there. Heck, one of the Tribagate cards, uh, or I should say, two of the Tribagate cards are Earths. This is just one of those little nitty-gritty things that I thought up of on the spot that I thought to myself, you know what, this will be interesting to actually not only just share, but to start a conversation about. Analyzing what went right and what went wrong with your deck is possibly one of the core pieces of what keeps a card game alive, in my opinion. But I still think there are some interesting factors with the game by just simply analysing what went right and what went wrong. Even with the inclusion of just one card shaping up the entire meta scheme, it is a little bit of a hard justification to make. But as a whole, when it comes to regionals or even YCS levels, I can see the argument for this still as a whole, even against something that isn't on a locals level. This may not be the best way to work. This might not have been the best way I could have worded it, but hey, oh, who am I to judge? I'm just a guy who just loves to play shit like this all the time. But let me know what you think. Do you think analyzing your deck's overall strengths and weaknesses and amplifying them for the next upcoming meta scene, or even the next locals or YCS and regionals, and seeing what works and what does not actually helps the deck and helps you with the game? Or do you think it's just a load of bollocks? I'm actually kind of curious to know what you think about this. Let me know in the comment section below because I'm actually kind of curious about this discussion myself. But until next time, guys, I've been a Raging Raven, and until next time, I bet you all to do.